What's up, everyone? I hope you all are having a very wonderful and blessed day. And if not, I do pray and hope that it gets better because you deserve it. I would like to say thank you for stopping by the channel and checking out today's video because it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it. Now, if you are enjoying the content or if you feel like you're going to be enjoying the content that you're seeing here today and you wouldn't mind continuing to help support not only me, but the channel as well, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can stay updated on all of my future content, especially, you know, if you be coming back to my channel on a consistent basis and you ain't hit that sub button yet, you might as well just go ahead and hit it. I'm getting up close into my mic so you can under, so you can feel what I'm saying. You might as well just go ahead and hit that button. But uh, today we're going to be talking about the topic of multiplayer and just general gameplay for Suicide Squad, well, a lack of gameplay. Just We're going to be talking about a lot. So we're just going to be talking about that in general today for Suicide Squad. So going all the way back to Arkham Asylum right the game that not only spawned the birth of possibly the most beloved superhero series in the gaming world but a revolution for superhero games going forward seeing the standard that is set for everything else coming after it arkham asylum took us into the world of batman in a way that we hadn't really seen before in gaming the idea of being trapped in one place surrounded by some of batman's most notorious villains who are all gunning to kill him in various different ways sounds like a very dope premise no matter the medium that it's in video games television movie cartoons comic book whatever it may be right because we know that batman's gonna make it out some way somehow it'd be crazy if he didn't because there have been you know comic storylines where he definitely did not come out that situation as the winner but it's more so just a question of not of whether or not batman is gonna make it out okay but simply just how crazy things will get during that one night with all of these people here in the same place together from bang showing up looking like an elderly person way past his prime until he got juiced up poison ivy going nuts due to venom giving her a massive upgrade scarecrow trying to give batman ptsd and test your current heart rate with those jump scares all the way back to joker pulling the strings leading to a massive showdown for all of gotham to watch asylum was a great game it absolutely was but it was what came after it that ended up raising the stakes Arkham city changed the game becoming one of the greatest games in the genre that we had only being passed up years and years later by marvel's spider-man now the key thing about you know arkham city and arkham asylum is that those two games were single player but things like the leaderboards were there so you could compete against other players and things like challenges and whatnot. And Arkham Knight definitely followed suit with that same formula. But there was a game that dared to venture even deeper into the pool that was multiplayer. They put more there, they put more than just their pinky toe in the water, right? And that's Arkham Origins. Now, before I continue, I do have to make this known that Origins is considered part of the series, but it was made by a different studio, which is WB Montreal origins is essentially the prequel to the main trilogy that features a younger more brute force focused batman and not the hardened stilly gazed master detective that we know in the other games so the way multiplayer worked for arkham origins right was that there were three sides you had joker's gang bang's gang and then batman and robin so it was essentially three factions all playing against each other uh completing an objective and one of the great things about that multiplayer was the fact that no group was ever extremely overpowered and for any of my transformers viewers that are here splash damage also worked on arkham origins as well so just you know keep that in mind as as a little fun fact now granted batman and robin were definitely able to stick to the shadows and play as how you would normally play them in a single player mode they weren't really too they weren't really all that broken or broken at all because like for the thugs as long as you were aware of your surroundings or you know where you were simply looking up into the risers at the gargoyles or looking down at the grates in the floor seeing that they were moving under you as long as you were aware and paying attention that definitely made a key difference in everything that it was you were doing like they even like the thugs even had a much weaker version of detective vision that definitely ran on a battery life similar to how i would say the battery 
system worked in our last games where like you know the more you use it that battery runs out and then you know it has to recharge and such and such that would allow you to see like up into the rafters where it's too dark that they, they balanced it out in a very smart way which made that multiplayer even more fun i loved it but i got into it way too late and sadly it's been shut down i wish they would remaster it but that's not gonna happen and that brings me into my whole point that i have here with suicide squad now it's been years since they've actually since this has been years since rock city has actually done multiplayer and they've added multiplayer into an open world third person action adventure game now the idea to make a game on the squad to begin with came about because they were looking through dc's giant roster to see who it was they could experiment with right to see exactly who it was they could experiment with and tell a story for it because they love doing character driven games and because of their love for the squad and who they are you know messing around with these flawed characters at some point all of these characters have been a hero an anti-hero or a villain regardless of whatever it is they say <laughs> they wanted to take a stab at these villains this time around and tell a new but connected story right bringing in everything that they mastered with the previous games while also adding in new elements like this being the shooter and having multiplayer two things that I would say they are familiar with seeing as how they've actually made something like this before uh this is information that is definitely new to me as well as you know whenever i'm talking about stuff like this you know i do my digging i do my research and as it turns out urban chaos right response was their first game as a studio and it was actually an fps game that contained both a story mode and multiplayer it's also the only non-dc related game that they have in their closet now moving back over to the arkham games right the closest to multiplayer that we had in arkham games were the dual play mechanic at night which allowed you to swap characters on the fly in combat and there were plenty of people who wish that that had some kind of multiplayer aspect to it seeing as how you could have a partner in the fight with you uh which was incredibly different from how the past games worked the studio just simply wanted to try something new and like i you know i applaud them for it you know as time as time changed things evolve and you know you want to try things new i don't have an issue with it i feel like in my opinion it's simply just a matter of if whether or not they can pull it off because what they're doing with suicide squad is on a much much bigger level than urban chaos other game other gamers in this space along with me maybe even you watching this video as well may have your own worries based off how the past few years have gone with other games in general we are four months out from this game being released it was officially revealed way back in 2020 and we've only had one gameplay trailer out of the two and a half almost three years that we've known about this game and that trailer was heavily scripted as well not to mention that they were almost quiet for the entirety of 2022 information wise again information wise with the last info drop being the announcement of the delay from Seth and Hill's Twitter account to 2023 so that they can ensure that the game releases in a great state, which I actually which I have absolutely no problem with at all. Take your time and make sure that your product is at the par so that everyone can enjoy it, right? But the lack of information is doing nothing but instilling stress and worries into the player base, which isn't good. When people are already having worries about the multiplayer and just general gameplay itself because we haven't really seen we haven't really seen any raw gameplay like solo or multiplayer like we've seen nothing outside of that scripted trailer we know that the story will be fire though they always deliver on that end but i feel like at this point that's simply just not enough especially since we're so close to release i feel like it may be a bad sign if more promotion for the game doesn't really ramp up by mid-february because the track record isn't great for games that you know start promoting a month or two months out from release there was this anime game uh for an anime known as black clover nobody knew what had a game nobody knew that this show was getting a game or a beta coming out to even begin with people only found out from the french account for bandai namco which is the company that publishes just about 90 percent of all the anime games you see nowadays the French account tweeted about the beta starting in a few days. We didn't even know if it was open or closed. We just know that they talked about it. It would, they posted sign ups. I got in, but it was just the whole thing was just handled very poorly. And then not one account from Bandai Namco, and they have multiple accounts across multiple different platforms. Not one account ever tweeted about the game's release 
except for the French account, a very, 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 very small number of times. Not one of them ever tweeted about the game's release. It's drop date, no trailers, no gameplay, no nothing. They made a game, they pushed it out. It was pretty much like let the player base do the promoting for us. That game didn't make it two months. And the reason why I use that as an example is because I would hate to see that happen for Suicide Squad. I love the Arkham series. I want to see it flourish and prosper, but I'm also not going to hold my tongue in Milan faith and you know praise the game to the high heavens saying, wait for this, wait for that. I try my best to be as unbiased as possible and speak how I feel. But like I say here all the time, I have no reason to lie. I'm too lazy for it. If I like something, I will support it as much as possible. And if I don't, trust me, I will make that known. Example. I have the disc, the actual disc for Fortnite. Yes, there is a disc and I have it because I rock with that game heavy. I was there before Battle Royale was even a thing. And I hate Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark and Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tekainichi. Those games are horrible and that is a hill I will die on. I love the squad in general. Shark and Boomer are literally my two favorite characters of that team. Well, just in general in dc which gives me even more reason to like this game because it's from a studio that i like and i trust that they'll do the right thing and they haven't really given me a reason not to all i'm asking for is you know for them to be a bit more vocal in order to ease the tension that we have about this game all we know for sure right now is that for the gameplay right players have the ability to either run the game alone with the ai controlling the other squad members or you could group up and play with you know two to four people i would assume in kind of like a pre-made group or a drop in and drop out kind of situation now each character will have their own styles and you will be able to switch back and forth between them on the fly i would maybe say something similar to how the character switching system works in grand theft auto 5 if you've played that uh, like Boomerang, for example, Boomerang has some tech on him that not only lets him use some form of super speed, but teleporting as well. I actually made a video about this, breaking it out. It's a bit older. <laughs> like, it's a bit. I'll put it up here in case any of you guys want to go look at that. Uh, Harley will be using Harley will be more like the Spider Man S type of character, seeing as how she's going to get around by swinging from what seems to be a bat drone, which, well, a, clearly a bat drone with a grappling hook dead shot can just outright fly and shark can well climb buildings and also leap small buildings in a single bound it's extremely open world top to bottom but we still know nothing will we simply be you know in a game with skill trees and different weapons and abilities to be used in a pre-built arsenal like the previous games or will this be a looter shooter will this be closer to god of nights or destiny or borderlands or avengers we know nothing and that is a serious issue seeing as how again we are so close to release instead of seeing the same style of trailers that we have been getting give us more gameplay give us raw footage hell give us a video of boomerang and deadshot having dialogue in a mission or simply just out in free roam give us something more to look forward to and give new people a reason to want to pick up a pre-order the game right this is all coming from a place of love honestly and i'm just i'm nothing more than you know a random somebody that simply wants to see a game that i like and care about do well that's all that's all it really is at the end of the day you know i'm just, just speaking how i feel but with that being said it's gonna go ahead and bring us to the end of today's video hopefully you guys have had a great time let me know how you feel down in the comments below about you know the lack of gameplay that we've gotten what you would like to see from rocksteady before the game eventually gets here if you didn't enjoy the video let me know now uh at the, let me know down below what it is i can improve on and if you did please remember to like share and subscribe and smack that notifications bell so that you'll never miss out on any of my suicide squad related content and i will catch y'all in the moonlight peace